we are live. Welcome to Moon Knight, episode 6, Thoughts. This episode is called Gods and Monsters. Spoilers, as usual, for this episode, and poss I might talk about the rest of the MCU as well. So, let's see. The... Yeah, so I heard someone say that they were... They were worried that the show would just end up in a big CGI fight between Ahmed and the rest of the Egyptian gods. That the climate should be more personal for the characters. I think they did a good job of making it more personal. And some people theorized Blade and Black Knight would show up by the end of the show. But instead we got complete confirmation on... I can't believe... J Jake Lockley, that's it. And, yeah, over the course of the show, we've seen the what it does, you know, the weight of having Khonshu on the consciousness, the khonshu -ness consciousness. And, let's see. Yeah, so I, uh, there was someone who said that the... Yeah, compared it to Total Recall, where you don't know what's real and what's a dream. And, yeah. I think that is... Yeah, that brings us to the specific stuff for this episode. I like that the, you know, song playing at the very start over the Marvel Studios logos, you know, has... There, like if you look at the lyrics it makes sense with what we're seeing and how it fades out as we close in on Mark's body still with the bullets in him and we see what happens with Layla and Harrow immediately after he shot Mark you know the only thing we already knew about this part of the, the story was that Harrow ends up sending a, a lot of souls up you know and we do see some of that later in the episode and Harrow holds the little statuette out towards his men, which appears to make all of them simultaneously drop their contacts. I appreciate that Layla is allowed to be distraught, but there's also a clear look in her eyes of she's going to deal with this. And while she does end up needing help, it's another woman helping her, not a man. We've had a lot of movies in the decades leading up to now where women were so frequently portrayed as victims. These days, they're almost never allowed to be human. If they're badasses, they're instead depicted as just perfect at badass, you know, which is just boring and, you know, that that can make you feel like, well, if not, if I'm not badass all the time, you know, for, for any young women, just, you know, who are inspired by them. Let's see. And yeah, we see Hero judge the cops at the checkpoint and only one of them was good enough for Ahmed's standards and Hero recruits him. He's dead, and I'm talking to you through dead people right now. So what? You could be my avatar. Mark says wonderful things about you. <laughs> and she says no. She realizes how bad it's been for Mark. She's not going to get involved. And there's maybe also the element it's personal. She doesn't want to get anybody else involved in the fight. At least, you know, she is later convinced. This was all so avoidable, and he smashes the Ushapti. Holy crap, Ahmed looks badass. I mean, I knew that, you know, okay, crocodile face, but still, super badass. Your scales lack balance. I understand. I hope this might correct my imbalance, but I see now that's impossible. I accept the scales regardless of outcome. So that was part of why, you know, he basically felt that he had done bad, like, yeah, he had done bad and he deserved to be punished and Khonshu wouldn't do it because he used him. He was using him instead of doing that. Man, Hero just has absolutely no luck. Every single god he goes to won't judge him. Really love Ahmet's voice, too. I like that there's some personality there. It's not just, like, badassery. So Ahmed specifically doesn't want someone who scales balance as an avatar again, so she's breaking her own rules. You know, I, I quite appreciated that. Are you joking? 
Mm, Kanchu has no sense of humor that he's aware of. You need a plan, little bug. I mean, technically a scarab is a bug, but it just doesn't sound quite as nice. And Kanchu continues to insist. Layla continues to refuse to become his avatar. Kanchu, time has been cruel to you. Indeed, I cannot allow you to proceed. Ultimately, Kanchu does still have some respect for her. I mean, this is the same guy who called Steven, like, Little Worm when Steven accidentally took control of the body in episode one. He's not exactly super nice to people, but the way he talks to Ahmed is respectful, despite him being determined to stop her. And Steven not intentionally being, you know, he, when he called Steven a little worm, it wasn't because he wanted Steve, like, dead. But, you know, he's, he is trying to kill Ahmed. And Mark leaves the field of reeds to save Steven against Tauret's advice. And I like the Kanchu and Ahmed debate rather than immediately jump into a fight. And they actually keep debating through the fight itself. I don't know if you can hear me, but I know if you're even there. Very moving when Mark talks to Statue Steven, even as he himself starts to become a statue. You came back. What the hell is wrong with you? But it did a little speak that it was not literal. Yeah, I know. My, my British accent's almost as bad as the Stephen Grant one. And yeah, I I gotta admit, I did really enjoy the CG fight between Kanju and Ahmed. And I I don't think it took up too much focus in, in the episode. Ultimately, it is about Mark and Steven and Layla working together to stop Ahmed, which means stopping Harrow. Osiris, you old softy. And she like turns around the ship to, to keep some of the sand, you know, slow down the sand from hitting them, which technically isn't, you know, like, I mean, it would be one thing if she, like, there aren't any souls on the boat. She's not, you know, she has to... If you're if you're headed toward the field of reeds. Although I guess... Never mind. I guess it's not a specific amount of... Whatever. The, the, my point is, you know, that is something she can... That is something she can do to help. And the very moment that Mark returns to his body, Conchu starts talking to him, realizes he's alive, alive again. The bullets fell out of his chest. He soups up. And Stephen takes over and Mr. Knight negotiates with Kanchu. A body instead of a statue. She's vulnerable. That makes sense. And certainly the whole statue plan should be abandoned at this point. Tarot's too excitable. Yelling in glee at the thought of the fun she and Layla are going to have. Which, of course, attracts attention. Meikaloi does an incredible job playing tower at in Layla's but like seriously go back and look at her body language like every single time tower takes over like her her entire yeah the, every, every movement of hers is completely different from Layla I also the when when the ah uh, when tower animated the dead body it didn't look like a living person being taken over, being forced to move against their will, it looked like, oh, she's literally like, you know, I mean, let's see, she needs him to speak. I mean, the movement, I feel like it's probably almost like a puppeteering thing. Like, she's just forcing the limbs to move, regardless of the fact that there's probably not very much blood flow there anymore. And like, yeah, I guess the, the uh, let's see, the, the, throat and the lungs no they probably don't work particularly well anymore anyway whatever she can get a voice out of it whatever but yeah the like the movements props to that actor who's you know lying there on on the ground pretending he was shot just or, ah, not shot killed with the magic you know not not very long ago and he's moving as if his body like it's, it's like she's struggling against the how the like when when a body is dead, it just it doesn't want to move. You know, there's nothing making it move anymore anymore. So, yeah, it it looks like she's constantly struggling to keep 
you know, she's like she's doing hand gestures as if like it takes all or she really has to fight to prevent the hand from just dropping. Layla's father's in the field of reeds, and as usual, Tauret is dropping these huge revelations so casually. I mean, to her, this is NBD, you know? Come on, get with the program. The afterlife is real, there are many of them. If you die and your scales don't balance, you're a saint statue for eternity, etc., etc. And we see Ahmed consuming all the souls. They fly into her mouth, she grows giant. Very cool. I saw several people call the fight between her and Kanshu a kaiju fight, which is really cool. And... It's apparently, like, in the comics, there hasn't been something quite like that, so, again, very cool. And I did, we, we haven't really seen, has there been much kaiju action in the MCU up to this point? I don't think so, and, and really, in, in general, the, the enemy being really giant like that, we haven't seen, yeah, I already mentioned, I'm spoiling the MCU, like, Shang-Chi had a uh, giant largely the MCU has and server are those the only ones those might and, and I guess arguably Fenris I think those might be the only ones it tends to be less yeah and anyway okay I already said I already thought the costume was super cool but then she sprouted wings and unsheathed swords that's awesome and yeah I suppose there is a similarity to the Falcon suit. And we get the trailer shot of Moon Knight and Harrow charging at each other. Some aerial battle between them, some fighting between Contra and Ahmed. I really loved seeing um, uh, seeing Moon Knight fly as well. Which, you know, some people would have preferred the Moon Copter. I get that. I do really like this version of it, though. And Ahmed hurts Khonshu, which hurts Moon Knight, but Layla shows up in time, rescues him. Steven gets to react to her coming back, too. I quite like that. And that is, like, I mean, that is basically Mark is like, okay, yeah, you know, I, I get it. You like her, too. And we see Mr. Knight using a little club things so badass. He throws one at Arthur, who knocks it away. Moon Knight catches it. Tag teaming, tapping out kind of thing. Yeah, very cool. And Moon Knight and Layla both take on Hera at the same time. And her two blades now, actually reminiscent of the one she had in an earlier episode. So that was probably... Is there anything on this show that isn't foreshadowing for something? I feel like every single... Like, you could go frame by frame and you there'd be some kind of... Yeah. And Moon Knight has a grappling hook. So they're, they're not going to go completely away from the Batman stuff. And I really like the, you know, this young Egyptian woman, you know, recognize, oh, it's an Egyptian superhero. Very cool. Had Ahmed been allowed to rule, Randall would have been saved. Your family would have been happy. She only needs to remove one weed. You. Wow. Holy crap. Shots fired. That was personal. That is not okay. Low blow. I love the shot where we see Khonshu and Ahmed fighting in the background, then Harrow walks into the shot instead of the shot cutting. And Mark blacks out, wakes up. The fight is over. Steve and Mark both agree that wasn't them. I know some people who really did not like that, and I get, I understand where they're coming from. I think I saw uh, Sean Chandler talks movies. He really did not like that. I understand why. I... I don't know, I, ultimately, I think I can only really judge it once I know what happens next, because there is a chance that we do actually see a little bit more of that, like, maybe next time Moon Knight shows up, we see some of what Jake Lockley does, you know, what, what he has done over the course of the show. So, it's, if... If we knew for a fact that this was the last time, like, if this was the end of The Dark Knight Rises, for example, where everybody knew, no, 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 they're not going to follow this up. Like, there's stuff that bothers me in The Dark Knight Rises with how it leaves things, considering that we know it's not going to get followed up. But, but yeah, uh, uh, it kills the mo momentum, and we wanted to see 
the villain defeated by one of the, the good guys instead of it. I get that, and I 100% understand why that bothered me. Get Harold. I know how to stop on it. Clever girl. I One thing, like, being that it's a finale, I kind of wish that the episode would let us know where Mark and Layla stand. We know where Mark and Steven stand, but, you know, she will kill again. Now you sound just like her. And to be fair, it's not the exact same thing because she has been killing. You know, you're not you're not judging an innocent person here. You're saying this guilty person is going to break out and and do more. But you know, I do appreciate that they're trying to stay true to this whole debate. And it is like, you know, one of the it it is a frustrating element of the the I, I don't think we I don't think it's right to judge someone who hasn't done anything yet but it is obviously frustrating that we you know that that the that we have to wait for someone to have already done something but you know I, I don't believe in judging someone before they've done something I believe in identifying that someone might do something and reaching out and trying to help them you know with like social programs and such so yeah And Mark demands Khonshu release them, and he does, despite them not killing Haro Ahmed. And Steven wakes up back in the hospital. But now Haro leaves a trail of blood. We'd rather go save the world. Let's escape this. I realize that's what he and his mum used to say, but it also kind of works as, yeah, it was late into the show that we got the gator. Left me a mule to ride. And they wake up in the apartment. I like that now Mark and Steven hand control the body back and forth, no problem. Like the you know, and and Mark is like, I can't believe we live in with such mess. You know, like there's no like now they're basically like roommates or friends or something. You know, where before it was like a struggle to keep control. And yeah, so we get the post credits with Harrow being the one trapped in an asylum, but it is revealed. It must be the real world though, because. Jake Lockley killing Harrow in the asylum wouldn't mean anything if, if it was the that asylum, so it must be real. And yeah, a man in black speaking Spanish, and we see that he killed someone. Why would I ever want? Meet my new friend, Jake Lockley. Today's your turn to lose. In the comics, Jake Lockley is a cab driver, so him being a limo driver here is a cute wink and nod to that. And like in the comics, he is ruthless in his violence. The limo is in the comics too, complete with the Spectre vanity license plate. And uh, there was something, right, right, some people theorized that he's going to be the wealthy alter because that is like in the comics, usually, ah, uh, let's see. I think Steven is usually the wealthy alter, and Mark is the, the uh, you know, ex-military person, and Jake Lockley is, like, street level. He goes out and beats information out of people kind of thing. And, yeah, some people still want him to, there to be a wealthy alter, a wealthy identity in the MCU Moon Knight. Yeah. So I guess this means that all Conchu needs is for Jake to take control of the body back, and the original body of Mark is his to use, which that that does help explain why he was so willing to, you know, to leave. And I mean, really, the moment that they said we're not going to kill him, now release us, like immediately he was like, fine, I'll get the the driver to do it and I think yeah and Aaron Ahmed do appear to legitimately be dead and there being two fish in the tank communicates now both of them have an equal share of the body and they believe that they can basically now do what they want since they're not country's fist anymore but Jake Lockley yeah 
So there are rumors that there will be a season two, and certainly this is kind of open-ended for a series finale. It feels more like a season one finale, like Loki's, you know, like... But there is just enough closure. I do think it would work if they let this be, if they want this to be the full finale. I think it'll work. I think that would be okay. But yeah, I, I'm i definitely excited for where he's going to show up next. And I guess there's a chance they have they have to recast Oscar Isaac, and that'll be frustrating, but I mean, does anybody still miss, like, I liked Edward Norton's, you know, both, both his Hulk and his Bruce Banner, but, like, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name, but yeah, the, the, you know, yeah, I, I cannot recall, but the, yeah, the, you know, the guy who take, took over from him is incredible. Same thing for uh, Ro Ro Rody. I guess those are the major ones. I'm not sure they're off the top of my head. I'm not sure there are really others. But yeah, you know, I, I'm going to miss Oscar Isaac in the role for sure. But I can also understand why he really doesn't want to get into a contract and have to do this kind of thing. Like, yeah. And, yeah, I guess there's some chance that Layla's going to continue as Tauret's avatar. Maybe she'll take up the name Scarlet Scarab. And that would be, I, I think there's a, a future for the character with that. And, you know, the... the Jake Lockley, there's some chance he's not going to ask Khonshu to be free because he loves having the power to take out his anger on people. And that is the thing, like, as long as at least one identity of Marx, you know, is still in Khonshu's service, that's it. And, yeah, that's that's everything that I had, so, yeah. Whether whether this is just the season one finale or it's the overall series finale, I I look forward to seeing Moon Knight again. There's no way they're just not gonna have him back. That I mean, yeah, they're they're either gonna have to recast Mark Stephen Jake, or I guess it's possible that Kanshu gets a different avatar. But that would I mean one of the biggest, most compelling aspects of Mark Stephen, Mark Stephen Jake is the, the DID and him struggling with the, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching the recording and I'll catch you next time.